Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Blue Origin returns their rocket booster to a powered soft landing. Academy of Model Aeronautics responds to UAS Registration Task Force recommendations. The UK CAA simplifies light aircraft prototype development. I'm Brie Cross, it's November 25th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Blue Origin announced yesterday that its New Shepard space vehicle successfully flew to space, reaching its planned test altitude of 329,839 feet. That's about 62 miles before executing a historic landing back at the launch site in West Texas on Monday. In a news release, Blue Origin said the flight validates its vehicle architecture and design. The unique ring fin shifted the center of pressure aft to help control re-entry and descent while eight large drag brakes slowed terminal speed to 387 miles per hour. Hydraulically accentuated fins steered the vehicle through challenging winds during descent and aligned the spacecraft at 5,000 feet above the landing pad. The BE-3 engine then slowed the spacecraft down for a precise landing on a predetermined pad. Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos said in part, quote, We are building Blue Origin to seed an enduring human presence in space to help us move beyond this blue planet that is the origin of all we know. Bezos added, full reuse is a game changer and we can't wait to fuel up and fly again. In its press announcement regarding the findings of the UAS Registration Task Force, the FAA stressed that all members of the task force, from toy manufacturers to airlines, agreed to the recommendations and that there was no dissension among the diverse groups at the table. It now seems that may have been a bit of an overstatement. Dave Mathewson, executive director of the Academy of Model Aeronautics, has issued a written response to the task force recommendations. Mathewson said that as a member of the task force, AMA agrees that registration of UAS makes sense at some level, and for flyers operating outside the guidance of a community-based organization or flying for commercial purposes. However, he said, quote, Unfortunately, as written, these recommendations would make the registration process an unnecessary and unjustified burden for our 185,000 members. The AMA wanted to include dissenting comments in the final task force report, but was prevented from doing so. Mathewson added, Unfortunately, the task force recommendations may ultimately prove untenable by requiring the registration of smaller devices that are essentially toys and do not represent safety concerns. After the break, the UK CAA promotes light aircraft development. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The process for test flying a new prototype aircraft or an aircraft with a substantial change has always been complex and costly both in the United States and in the UK. Now in an effort to promote light aircraft development in the UK, the UK Civil Aviation Authority has revised the requirements for prototype experimental aircraft testing by eliminating the red tape and financial burdens associated with securing airworthiness and operational approval for prototype flights. The change allows aircraft designers to try out a new concept for aircraft weighing up to a maximum takeoff weight of 2,000 kilograms, which is about 4,400 pounds, without going through the certification process. 
If the testing process proves fruitful and viable, a full certification program can then be planned and funded in the usual way. Proof of concept flights will still be required to undertake a risk assessment process to support the activity and, in particular, to ensure that the risks to third parties are adequately addressed. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. The whole goal is to just come and relax, have some fun, no pressure, enjoy yourselves, and it gives everybody a break in the winter that are in a hobby that can't fly outside. So. If winter's got you down, here's a way to fly without preheating your engine. A&N's Jim Campbell visited EFES 2015 and shows us how much fun it can be to fly indoor RC model aircraft. Search Electrifying EFES 2015 on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Lynx spacecraft landings are being simulated. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Citizens in Space, a project of the United States Rocket Academy and Starbase Operations have completed tests to help advance commercial spaceflight training. They developed a technique to simulate the landing profile of the X-Core Lynx spacecraft using an L-39C Albatross jet trainer. The second and third Gulfstream G-500 aircraft have joined the flight test campaign with successful completion of their initial flights. One aircraft will focus on flight loads validation, while the other is the main test bed for the G-500 avionics system. Dassault Falcon Jet has completed another major expansion of its Little Rock, Arkansas Completion Center. This will add an additional 350 square feet, which brings the total facility footprint to 1.25 million square feet. The FAA and EASA have jointly certified CFM International's Advanced Leap 1A engine, paving the way for entry into service in 2016. CFM is unique in that it is the only engine manufacturer to gain dual original certification from both agencies in unison. Tuskegee Airman Milton Crenshaw has passed away at the age of 96. He was one of the original flight instructors for the program established by President Roosevelt to train African-American pilots in a segregated unit. He trained pilots between 1941 and 1946. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The Transgender Law Center, based in Oakland, California, says that the FAA holds transgender pilots to an unreasonably high standard when it comes to being granted a medical certificate. The issue has been brought up by Jessica Zacharias. It's reported she said that every year since 2001, she has renewed her medical certificate in accordance with the FARS. But in 2013, she reported to the FAA that she was in the process of transitioning from male to female, and that's when the FAA said that they would require extra medical information from her. A TV station reports that Zacharias said she was required to undergo an additional psychological evaluation and provide a letter from her doctor describing her prescription drugs and her transition prognosis. They also asked for very detailed information about her plans for the future. In a statement, the FAA said that, quote, 
Once a transgender pilot is determined to be stable following their gender transition, they may be issued an unrestricted medical certificate. We are in the process of clarifying our guidance in our Aviation Medical Examiner's Guide." End quote. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a happy Thanksgiving. We will see you next Monday.